everybody, welcome. Who is Shushi? Welcome. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which is traditionally known as the birthday of the church. And the decorations and the birthday cake, thank you, Kezia, for making the birthday cake. And uh, some things for the tables, and that will be explained as we go along. But welcome, it's so good to have you with us. Thanks for playing in the band as well. On this beautiful day, let's stand and bring our praise and worship to God because He is the one who has made us, sustained us, saved us, and is preparing us for the works of His service. Let's stand to sing together. <laughs>
send that spark, that flame, into our hearts and minds, into our very souls. We may be on fire for you, your bright light, in this place, in this village, in our workplaces, in our schools and colleges, in our neighbourhoods. Encourage us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We take a seat. On that first Pentecost, there were many languages spoken, and we'll uh, hear that a little bit, uh, hear that reading a little bit uh, in a minute. We've got a little question on your tables. If you'd just chat about Just around your tables, make sure everyone's involved. Go for it.
Which Joe's going to do, then I'm going to speak a little bit, then Howard's going to do the next bit, then I'll speak a little bit. And, and we will be home for Christmas thing, not worry. Come on. Well, she can do it from there if it's nice and loud, Joe. Nice and loud. Hang on, nice and loud. Just wait a second, everyone's still looking up. You. So the disciples on that Pentecost, that uh, first Holy Spirit filled Pentecost, experienced the Holy Spirit. Something happened, this fire that was visible came upon them and they just went bonkers. It was incredible, incredible first uh, sort of encounter in that way with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we've just prized a few people, well there's at least two who are going to say something, but Going to share something? You said you would. Marvellous. Uh, and if anybody else wants to, I did send an email to a few people, but, but it just as you hear what people are saying, you just think, yeah, actually, I'll share an experience I've had of the Holy Spirit, then please do. And if you're going to stay where you are, that's cool, but um, 
make sure you speak really loud because some old people like me can't hear properly. <laughs> Go for it. Or come and use the microphone. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So my experience was very soon after I was confirmed, at the great old age of 31, so I was sort of an, an adult by that time, and um, people had mentioned the Holy Spirit in, in my journey, as it were. But the day after my confirmation, it was a sunny day, and I just felt completely buoyed up. And I saw my shadow cast on the pavement, and it was literally bouncing up the road. And it led me to write something for the parish magazine. And I wrote, the shadow cast in a brightly burning sun bounced up the road where only days before it had trudged. And it was that contrast between the buoyancy, the, the lightness, the joy of that day and only days before. And then it was sort of explained to me afterwards why perhaps I had felt like that. Thank you, Kathy. Brilliant. The joy of the spirit. Absolutely. Thank you. Richard. <coughs> So yeah, so it's quite a few, uh, couple of years ago, I was going through quite a bad time, and I was a bit lost, feeling a bit of a failure, doing all sorts of things like that, you know. And I bumped, I met someone at a barbecue, and she started to talk to me about faith. And I sort of, I'd, I'd been coming to church here, but laughs, and haven't really been for a long time. And um, and she said to me, yeah, you do rock bottom, you do all these things, you're really into music, why don't you try different forms of worship music to see if it helps you get back into faith? <coughs> She said, she said something in a second band. So then we were out walking one day and she said, I want to play this bit of music. And it's a track, and some people know it, and I've, I've, I've said it in my testimony called Rescue by Lauren Daigle. And, and she started to play it and she walked off and left me just to sort of listen to it. Within about five minutes, I was in absolute floods of tears, just not consolable. And um, she came back after a bit, she said, I'd slept in. Moment. I was literally overwhelmed with a feeling of warmth. I was crying with a feeling of warmth. And, and she said nothing. And then I did the articles with you, Mark. And I, I went back to her and said, That was the Holy Spirit, wasn't it? She just smiled at me and nodded. She said, I didn't really want it. You had to discover that yourself. What it was, I wasn't going to tell it. And I was overwhelmed. It was this feeling I was just emotionally completely a mess at that point. Like, uh, uh, but also a huge feeling of warmth at the same time. So it's a little bit. A mixture of things. Thank you, Richard. Anybody else want to share an experience of the Holy Spirit that they've had? Um, some of you know I became a Christian quite um, late compared to, compared to that when I was 19. But before, before that, I, I honestly was a complete atheist. I, I just didn't, I didn't understand how anybody could believe. I just couldn't couldn't see it at all. And I, I but my friend took me to her church. It was um, it was a, a day where they'd all been told, bring a friend this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and <I did. laughs> there were eight of us living in our flat, first year of university, and she asked me first, I think, and I said no, I feel like a complete hypocrite. I can't. I'm sorry. But then she asked everybody else, and everybody said no. And I felt really bad for her because she was a lovely friend. So I said, I'll go with you. And actually, what you said about being really emotional and being in tears, I, I can't, I'm not even sure if someone said something, but I, it was a baptism, this service, we were being baptized. It was, it was a huge congregation. And I remember at the beginning, you know, looking around and hearing some things and thinking, yeah, we're definitely not, definitely not my thing. And, but then the next thing I remember, I was in absolute floods of tears, completely overwhelmed, and I felt a bit embarrassed, like, why am I crying? I have nothing wrong with, like, what is wrong with me? 
And I turned to my friend and I said, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. And she said, oh, don't worry, this is this happens at church sometimes. And she was so unsurprised. I, could, I thought she was going to be saying to me, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? You know, sit down. But um, she just wasn't surprised at all. And it, I realised, wow, okay. And from that day, I have believed in God, even when even when I haven't particularly acted on it, even when I haven't really been a Christian, from that day, it's like, I don't believe in God, I know him. I know God. It's, it's like, I, I know he's there as much as I know that I'm here, and you're here. And I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was at the time, but I just did that with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else want to share something experience of the Holy Spirit that they've had? I think it's all experience. <clears throat> I had those sort of experiences many years ago. So many years when we were um, deciding whether to buy a larger house, and Alan was going to leave his job, we shared it with the church, and what we were going to do, which way is God leading us. And we went to a Baptist church for their anniversary. Because I was there for a I had a baby, so we went to there and <laughs> Very boring preacher sitting there, and he suddenly came alive and said, And Abraham went forth knowing not where he was going. And somebody in our fellowship turned around to us and put his thumbs up. <laughs> and Alan went up to him after and said, You realize what you said? Um, I'm going to leave my job. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit worked through him because there was a sudden change in him, in his preaching, and that was a word for us. Brilliant, just four great examples of the experience of experiencing the Holy Spirit. Howard, let's have uh, the next bit of the right near the start of Genesis. You might, it might be myth, it might be history, it doesn't really matter, but it gives an explanation. It's a story that as the numbers of people on earth grew and they began to spread and develop technology, they grew rather arrogant, rather pleased with themselves. To make a name for themselves, they decided with their modern technology to build a town. A tower that would be so high it would reach to the heavens. But God came and saw what they were doing. And in response to the people's pride and arrogance, he overturned the project. Put the people into confusion. Confused their languages. This curse or punishment broke their cycle of arrogance that left them unable to fulfil their potential. The curse remained until death. That's the story of the Tower of Babel, as you'll find. Babel, that's where Babylon comes from. That it, it, you find in the beginning of Genesis. But here, in Pentecost, it's like the reverse story. The 
Holy Spirit brought understanding. Those feelings of fear, of isolation, of uh, all that we had at the beginning there, it was taken away. As those from so many different nations. Do we have the map up, Joe? Let me see. So that's where they all. But the disciples are clearly understood. The curse of pride and arrogance and sin has been lifted. The work of God through Jesus on the cross, where the curse was laid on him, has changed everything. The curse of Babel is reversed by Christ through his spirit on Pentecost. But did you notice as Harold finished, it's still not clear. There's 12, the people... Say, what's going on? Verse 13, some of the more cynical people say they're just drunk. And so Peter stands up, and our final bit of the reading, I can't remember who I gave it to, Joe. continues to rebirth it day by day around the world. We're twice the number here today as the disciples were on that first Pentecost Sunday. Sat in that room, doors locked, 
unsure of the future. They just seem and spent time with the most amazing person they've ever met in their life. And it turned everything upside down. But they were stuck in this room. Oh my word, what's going to happen next? Boom. Everything changes as the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And fills us in the church here this morning. Peter, at the end of his little talk to the guys uh, and girls from around the world, calls them to repent. Repent of the arrogance and pride that was there on, at the building of the Tower of Babel. The arrogance and pride that says we can trust in ourselves and in our own technologies and in our own power and education and everything else. To repent, to declare the wonders of God to all around live in step with the Spirit, listening and reacting to his prompting and guiding. Let us pray. So come, Holy Spirit, recreate, refresh, rebirth your church around the world. Here in Marley Bonnet and beyond. Come, Holy Spirit, change our lives. Empower us to declare the wonders of Jesus that we've seen in our own lives to those around. shine like stars for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to spill that childlike bit of our, our soul as a bit of a takeaway, a bit of a reminder now. Um, if you are able to blow up the balloon, then do. <laughs> if not, give it to somebody who can. So here we go. Little illustrations to remind us. So the spirit is often described as wind, as like wind. I think it was, wasn't it, at the beginning there, like a wind in that room. So the, the spirit in us is the air in the balloon. And then as you blow the balloon, it becomes a head, it becomes your head. Okay? So blow it, um, don't overblow it, but blow it, tie it, and then imagine it. This is your head filled with the Holy Spirit. So get a pen and do a bit of self-portrait on the balloon, okay? Careful not to pop it, but a bit of a self-portrait. I'm going to stop there, say so it's you filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll stop there and I'll explain the last bit in just a moment, okay? But let's, uh, let's get that one done first. Please don't feel embarrassed, do ask somebody else to help if you need it help. We do need to put a, a knot in it, otherwise the spirit will just, it won't leak out of you, it'll blast out of you. How are you doing? You got your hold it next to your head and see if the person next to you recognises your balloon shape. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I 
<laughs> okay, how are we doing? We uh... Oh! oh yeah. <laughs> so, what I should have said is, oh no, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right, so there's me, very roughly drawn. So what we're going to do, I haven't got that much hair, thank you. Okay. Right, so what you're going to do now is on your, there's a pile of labels, so you need a label. The sticker, you're going to, before you, before you start to do, so you need to write something. What we're going to do is declare the wonders of God. So we are filled with God's Holy Spirit, and like those people on Pentecost, we're going to declare the wonders of God. So we're going to get a label, and we're going to stick it on our mouth. But before we stick it on our mouth, you need to write a wonder of God. So something that, about God, about Jesus, that actually, that really matters to you. That's really affected you. Really made you think. Something maybe of the Holy Spirit's work in you. That you would declare. That you would speak of. That you would tell somebody. Perhaps outside the church or in. So write it on that label and then stick it on your mouth. Okay. <laughs> So once you've done that, if you could just show, show and tell the rest of your table, that would be great. Okay, just show and tell the rest of your table what you've done. Are, 
but if it helps you to focus on God, you might want to close your eyes while you're singing. Once you've got the words of the chorus, you might want to hold your hands out because one of the lines is break up the spirit break out, break our walls down, spirit break out, heaven come down. And it's just that invitation really that, that Jesus would meet with us through the spirit. There is a line in the first verse which says sing louder, which I've always objected to in this song, but I do love the rest of the song. And I think it is an encouragement to us to sing louder, but it's also acknowledging that all of heaven, the angels are singing, everybody is praising God, um, and we're just joining in with something on this, something that's going on in all of creation. So why don't you remain seated to start with, and then maybe I'll tell you when to stand up, or you might just want to.
see this patty comes to lead us in prayer. Between these short prayers, after the words, Heavenly Father, would you please join in, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, fill us, fill us with, with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Lord, as we celebrate the birthday of your Church, we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. For those who will worship you today in different ways, in different countries, and in different languages. Despite those differences, we give you thanks that you give us an understanding which is beyond words. May they too find a commonality that brings them together. Help them to understand the consequences of their words as well as their actions. May they speak the language of peace. Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift to you your church here in Marlow Bottom. We ask for a greater understanding of your vision for this place, for the people, for the buildings, and also how that vision may be realized. As we pray, we open ourselves to your Holy Spirit. Lord, guide us and inspire us so that your will be done. Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. to you our relationships. Help us to listen, not just to hear, and to understand what lies behind the spoken word. Grant us patience and love, especially with those we find difficult to understand. Lord, as we think of this scene at Pentecost, the excitement and celebration, thank you for all the happy times we share and our reasons to celebrate. There was also noise and confusion. Sometimes our lives seem to be noisy and confusing. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Heavenly Father, fill us with us your Holy Spirit. We pray.
there's a picture of just feeling. Can you come and share it with Sammy or myself afterwards? We'd love to just uh, hear that and be encouraged by that little sense of prayer you did. So that would be great. Uh, hopefully you've picked up our newsletter that went out on email the day before yesterday. Yeah, so no, I'm sure, he's just getting out of it. I particularly need to encourage you uh, to come next week. Uh, Christian, Howard and Jenny's daughter, and husband Dave are with us uh, over at the chapel. Um, they are being interviewed at the 9.30 service and at the 11 o'clock service, and Dave is preaching at the 11 o'clock. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the church, uh, the church council uh, dis- uh, decided to make a decision to partner with them. They are off to Kenya at some point uh, to work in a Bible college out there and serve the Lord out there. And we are partnering with them in that. We will receive their prayer letters, be praying for them, we will give to them uh, financially. And uh, so we're going to hear a bit about that from them. But also, many of you will know, they've, they've had a really tough year. Uh, uh, they've had the joy of Caleb being born. And uh, in the last I've lost count. What is he? April. So uh, just what two months, less than two months. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, had, he's got a bit of a cleft palate, which is why they, they were going to go uh, probably towards the end of this year to Kenya, and that's been uh, put back uh, a bit because as they they seek to be with Kenya, and then obviously you'll remember that uh, they lost Josiah, who died uh, a year ago or so as well. So they've got quite a story of faith. Uh, to share, and it will be a fascinating morning next uh, week. Do come along to that if you can, and maybe invite others along for me. Katie's testimony there of a guest Sunday. That'd be a good one to bring them along to. Otherwise, everything else is in the newsletter. What isn't in the newsletter is that on June the 11th, the 11 o'clock service won't happen here. Instead, it'll happen at Hickinson Park, along with hopefully around two or 300 other Christians from. Uh, the church is in Marlow, and we worship together uh, on the st- main stage there that uh, the Marlow Regatta celebrations are happening on. That's at uh, 10.30 on June the 11th, rather than the 11 o'clock service. Otherwise, it's all in the newsletter. Do let me know if you don't get it, and I'll make sure you do next week. We're going to sing our final uh, song, Love Divines or Love Excelling. Let's stand to sing together. Who is Dr. Kenneth? Kristen and uh, Dave, who are Kristen, is Howard and Jenny's daughter. Uh, they go to church. Uh, then their main church is the church in London where they go, um, uh, but they are seeking support and encouragement from other churches and people who know them. So I imagine Jean and. Um, what's your name again? I'm losing it. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Jean and Alan. Have, well, you must have known Kristen for. So she was born, brilliant. So yeah, uh, well known by some. Let's see if you go.
of your spirit to live and work to your praise and may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us all and remain with us this day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 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 so you take a seat.